wake up. As your right hand drifts to the side of your torso, it brushes against something cold and rigid. A thick iron band is secured around your midsection. Welded onto the right side is a small metal box with a keyhole and three glowing dots on top. Four thick chains are also anchored to your band. You tug on the restraint, but it doesn't budge. Welcome everybody. We're so thrilled that you decided to spend your evening here with us. You all should know the four pillars that guide us. Safety, courtesy, show, and efficiency. These are the ideological keys to our success. And tonight, they'll also be the literal keys to your success. Now we get to the fun parts. For each death you directly or indirectly cause, your team will be awarded an additional $250,000. Well, best of luck, folks. Hope you have a magical evening. Our fun begins. What is up, everybody? It's your boy, Antoine Thomas, and welcome your beautiful faces back to another episode of Let's Play Mousetrap by Albi. Where we last left off, we got stabbed by a syringe. We ended up waking up strapped to three other people inside of a hellscape-like saw room, and we met Dickie the Rat, where his disembodied voice ended up telling us that our fun begins now. You sit in stunned silence slowly processing what you just heard. That's, I mean, is that? No. Max begins to mutter, disbelief plastered across her face. Jovi laughs half-heartedly, possibly waiting for the punchline to arrive. Emerson is already pulling a folded map from one of the pouches of her leather bond on Dolier. Maria sits across from you, still as a statue, staring off into the middle distance. Uh, you ask everyone if they're okay, thoughtful. You gaze around the room, trying to figure out what, where you are, logical, you're feeling distraught and need to feel some semblance of safety. You look over at Arya, who seems as accept as you are, and ask her for a hug. Uh, you think Emerson is trying to find out where you need to go, so you ask if she wants any help. Okay, so I think that first thing I do in any any situation as I gaze around the room, make sure I know where I am. You don't even have to think about it. This is one of the back rooms at the state marketplace. You spent hours in this room and know exactly where you are and what's around you. Okay, that's good. Uh, let's go ahead and check every, make sure everyone's okay. Your team appreciated that. You push through this anxiety, making your throat feel like it's about to close up and address the group. Is everything okay? Or no. It's probably safe to assume that none of us are okay. But no one's hurt, right? You squint through the darkness at your companions' faces. Max and Arya both snap out of their distracted trances and nod at you. Emerson gives you a thumbs up, though her eyes remain glued to the map. Well, I'm just fine, Jovi says. I'm wearing clothes, so this isn't a bad nightmare yet. It's just a normal one. All right, uh, let's go. Let's go seeking comfort. I, I normally don't do that. I normally go straight to work, and I'm not normally the type to go and hug. But it's also for Arya. For Arya, <laughs> it's gonna get me killed. I swear. You look at Arya's unusual, unusually hollow expression and feel a tugging sensation in your chest, a terror and pain that you recognize in your own psyche. Hey, Arya, you call. Arya looks at you and tries, to, but fails to muster a smile. Can I have a hug? You ask. She nods and motions for you to come over. You pull yourself to your knees and crawl over to Arya, the chain scraping across the floor behind you. You reach her and wrap your arms around her chest. Arya pulls you into the warmest bear hug you've ever received. Don't worry, she whispers. We're going to be okay, I promise. I won't let anyone harm you. You hear Jovi clear their throat behind you. Uh, <coughs> sorry, this is real sweet and all, but I think people might just try to kill us if we sit here for too long. So, we should probably get moving. With a sigh, you let go one another and both stumble to your feet. Okay then, you address your companions. What's our plan? So, Emerson begins, spinning the map around so that the rest of you can look at it. There are a couple of efficiency keys around the park. We just need to find out where we are. We're in the marketplace, you say, Arya nodding beside you. Oh, okay, great. In that case, the two closest keys are in Pirate's Life and Chase's Lightspeed's Great Escape. They're in opposite directions, but relatively the same distance from here. Emerson looks up. Any preferences? The others shrug and shake their heads. The decision turns to you. Head towards Pirate's Life, or go to Chase's Life Speed's Great Escape. Okay, we're gonna go head towards Pirate's Life. By choosing to go to Pirate's Life, you are selecting the Adventure Quest route. The stops for the Adventure Quest routes are Pirate's Life Efficiency Key, the River Cruise Show Key, Spooky Mansion Courtesy Key, and Journey to Neverland Safety Key. By choosing to go to Ch Chase Lightspeed's Great Escape, you are selecting the Tomorrow Quest route. 
stops for the Tomorrow Crest Reroute are Chase Lightspeed's Great Escape, Efficiency Key, Bamboo Circus Show Key, Alice's Mad Adventures Courtesy Key, and Journey to Neverland Safety Key. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, Chase Lightspeed since we've already listened or read his, his biography. So I think we should head for Chase's Lightspeed's ride. Cool, let's get going then. Emerson folds the map back up. Aria, do you know where the exit is? This way, Aria starts for the back stairwell. Wait, you pipe up. Since we're here, do we want to grab anything from the marketplace? Is there anything here that would be useful? Emerson asks. Absolutely. Just positively the best items you could ever find in all of knockoff Disneyland. You respond. Max clears her throat. <clears throat> I think it's a great idea. I bet there's some kind of first aid kit out there too, right? We should grab it, just in case. You all nod in agreement and head into the shop. The storm thrashes violently against the windows. The wind roars while the rain claws at the glass like some kind of rabid animal. Safely staying towards the back of the store, you grab both a set of cheese knives, a frying pan, and a box of cookies, a pot lid. Knives, a set of, che set of six cheese knives decorated with the faces of Dickie and his friends. These aren't the sharpest knives in the world, but they'll certainly do the trick. As far as weapons go, the cheese knives are small and easily concealed, which means they'll remain inconspicuous, but you may lose track of them as you use them. A cast iron frying pan with the Whimsy logo on its handle. This thing is heavy as hell and will certainly leave a mark. Aside from being great at bashing, the frying pan is a large hunk of metal that you're unlikely to forget anywhere, but you can't hide the fact that you're carrying it. I'm gonna go with the frying pan. I feel like a heavy hitter is the best for me. Because normally, if you could give yourself enough time and you just whack them in the back, or you can just get away with it. That means while everyone else is coll colluding with our enemies, I'll be behind and I'll whack them in the back as hard as I can. A uh, box of cookies, a pack of five frosted cookies, snacking on these will replenish your energy, soothe addled minds, and help you keep your head in the game. A large steel pot lid that you can use as a makeshift shield. Like the pan, the pot lid isn't exactly subtle. But what's more important, being subtle or not being stabbed? I'm gonna be the fighter. I don't know about you guys, but I'm gonna be a fighter in this in this playthrough. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna beat the living sh out of everyone. You grab the frying pan, holding it securely in your dominant hand, and with your other hand, grip the pot lid with like a makeshift shield. Kitchen Barbarian is a strong look, and you're serving it right now. I am a barbaric, gothic, classical looking motherfucker. I'm ready. I'm ready to knock some people out. I'm like, good day, sir. Whack. <laughs> look over and see Max tucking the first aid kit under her arm. Quickly and silently, you all duck back into the storage room. <sighs> okay. You exhale. Now we can go. The door opens with a metallic shriek. You wince. Wait, Arya says, reaching in front of you to block you from going through. She pauses for a moment, eyes closed, listening intently. What the fuck is she doing? Jovi asks. Emerson shushes them. What? Jovi continues. Arya finally opens her eyes. I don't hear anyone. Max peeks over Arya's shoulder. It looks like the lights aren't working. Damn, if only we had flashlights, Jovi sighs. From the back of the group, Emerson speaks up. Yeah, flashlights are great, but lights attract attention. Do we want others to know where we're coming? She ignores Jovi's chuckling and continues. I could guide someone in the dark. They'd just have to run a hand along the wall and tell me what they feel. Why can't you do that yourself, you ask? Looking at the ground, Emerson shrugs. Uh, no reason. I just I don't really want to be out in the front. But you're sure you can navigate us, Arya asks. Yes, I'm, I'm sure. You decide that it's best to use the flashlight and you'll take the lead. You decide that it's best to use the flashlight, but you don't want to lead. You decide to travel in the darkness without flashlights and you'll take the lead. You decide to travel in the darkness without flashlights and you don't want to take the lead. I feel like I'll take the lead because I have a shield just in case if I ever if we ever get attacked front and front and face and forward. As long as everyone has my back, I got the front. Because I got a nice shield right here. And as long and I'd rather not travel with flashlights because the better chance is to not let people know what we're doing. And as long as Emerson knows what the hell's going on, I feel like we have a better a better chance. So let, let's just do this. Emerson liked that. Jovi did not. I think Emerson's right, you say. If she can get us there either way, then let's exercise caution while we still can. You step in front of Aria. So, if I tell you what I feel, then you'll tell me where to go. Yeah, Emerson replies. In particular, let me know when you feel a corner. Okay, no problem. 
the five of you take a moment to figure out how best to move with your chains and figure out a way to carry them so they don't make any extra noise. You take the helm with Arya and Emerson behind you while Jovi and Max bring up the rear. Oh god, Max is in the back? No, send Jovi in the back. Apparently we have competition between me and Jovi, so Jovi says goes in the back. Am I the only person who has any any sort of weapons? Oh yeah, no, I seem to be the only person that I know who has weapons, other than Max having the first aid kit, which again, she is most reliable. She has the first aid kit. You've used this stairwell countless times. You know it well. It's wide, metal steps and center block walls had no mysteries for you, but you can't see the stairs. You just know that they exist somewhere in the yawning blackness before you. Well, you believe they're there. And what's worse, you aren't just going into the darkness, you're going down into the darkness. Something about that distinction is deeply unsettling, like you're about to sink into a void, to willfully submerge yourself under its still, inky surface. You feel your shoulders tensing up and your throat starting to restrict, but you do your best to free yourself from the growing anxiety. Against every instinct your body has, you take a step into the darkness and begin to descend. Your hand passes over the bumpy, painted cinder blocks, filling the cold stone and wiping away condensation with your fingertips. You make it to the bottom of the stairs and hear your foot splash in a puddle. A sense of dread blooms in the pit of your stomach. If there are puddles down here, is there a chance the tunnels will flood? Are they flooding now and you just can't see it? That's the last thing you need right now. You're already fighting to survive a killer game. Is that not hard enough? Arya's voice shakes your mind free of the hole you're beginning to fall into. You okay? Oh yeah, just awesome. You retort, waving your arms in front of you until you find the push bar to the open door. Before you go into the hallway, you listen. Silence. Cautiously, you step forward into the corridor and begin running your hand down the wall, whispering back and forth with Emerson about you, sense and where to turn. The five of you walk at a reasonably quick pace for people stumbling their way through the dark. Emerson's navigation is essential and, honestly, kind of incredible. Without her guidance, you would have been hopelessly lost. You do your best to muster up whatever courage you have. You weren't sure if you could do it and you feel like you've exhausted some of your mental strength. But you managed to get your team to tomorrow quest without incident. Oh, so how's my mental strength doing? Oh my, oh, oh my sanity went down bad. Well, that's not good. You feel around for the door handle at the top of the stairs to chase to the chase light speed ride and exit the tunnels. You step out into a completely dark lobby. You know what ride lobbies normally look like, and you've been in this one before but you have no idea where anything is without being able to see it. Thankfully, Jovi taps on your shoulder and whispers, Hey, I think I see a door over there. They start walking off into the darkness. You follow them to a corner of the room where they place their hand on the handle of a door, which you can still barely see from only a few feet away. How did you notice that? You whisper. Jovi shrugs. I'm a stagehand. I'm used to the darkness. Most of the time is spent working in theaters, so I have to be good at seeing shit in the dark. They push the door open with their hip and wave you in, after you. As you step backstage, you're relieved to see that there are emergency lights providing some illumination to the narrow, industrial corridor. A sign in front of you reads, Left, right floor, right, control tower. Huh, Jovi sighs. You know, if we go to the control tower, I may be able to get the lights on. Then we wouldn't have to do this in the dark. You nod to Jovi and head right towards the control tower, hoping to turn both the ride and the lights on. There are probably emergency lights out there too. You don't need Jovi to turn the ride on. That would just draw attention. I'm kind of not good with this whole darkness thing because it means people have a chance at attacking us. However, if we turn on the lights, then everyone can see everyone. You know what? You know what, not Jovi? You know, I like you. I like your sense. You know, let's just go do it. It doesn't take Jovi long to figure out how the ride works. They switch everything on and you hear the ride roar to life below you. As all the systems blink to life, you see the cameras come back online. Standing in the middle of the ride floor is another group of five, practically shitting their pants as the world around them suddenly springs to life. One of them is dressed like he works at this ride, wearing a futuristic Tomorrow Quest uniform and brandishing his knife with glee. The next person is wearing a sheriff's outfit, holding what looks like a BB gun in their hands and spitting a toothpick between their front teeth. A third individual is wearing an acrobat's unitard and twirling a metal pipe as if it were a baton. The fourth is a gothic suit like yours and Arya's, but they have one of those long plague doctor masks covering their face. The last member is chained in the center like yourself. You see Winnie the Pooh shaking like a leaf. 
almost sinking to the floor. He's crying, using his big furry paws to wipe away his tears. All of these people are covered in blood. Even Poe, whose soft yellow fur is splattered crimson. Hey, how did that happen? You hear one of them yell. Not through a speaker system or anything, just echoing up the hallway. They must be right at those base of the stairs. Shh, you hear someone else hiss. Whoever did that might hear you. The four of the outside begin to creep away from the hallway, away from your current position. Pooh Bear, however, remains rooted to the floor. You watch as the others tug at the chains until Pooh falls to the floor. Ugh, a third voice grunts. What the fuck is wrong with them? Why won't they fucking cooperate? Acrobat walks over to Poe and kicks them in the shoulder. For our next trick, you better get the fuck up, she screams. Whoa, 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 the sheriff pulls her back. There now, lass, I was pushing it. Don't go breaking character, yeah, yeah. Why are they talking like that, you mutter to yourself. Because they're a sheriff from Frontier Quest. Max steps away from the, from the door, stepping closer to you. Remember what Dickie said? We all get punished if one of us breaks character. The sheriff person is trying to prevent that from happening. You furrow your brow. So, wait. Yes, Max anticipates your question. When we go on stage, Emerson has to be a pirate. Jovi has to be a noble. I have to be Mostrosa. And you have to, you and Arya have to be gloomy servants or, I don't know, something like that. Arya leans back. I wish you could be a bit more specific than that, but... Okay. You're sure we have to do this, you ask. Max shrugs. If we don't want to get punished... Yeah, I think so. You sigh. Oh, joy is joy. I was just thinking this was a bit it was a bit too easy and turned back to the cameras. The people out on the floor are sneaking through the main area. You sift through the different camera feeds, looking for the keys. At the back of the ride, you see Chase and his husband Astro saluting the empty carts rolling by. Pinned like metals to the sash of Chase's suit are a collection of keys. There, you place your finger on the old black and white screen and feel static buzz beneath your skin. Let's get going. Before the five of you make your way back down the stairs, you double check where the other team is. Pooh is fully on the ground, refusing to move while the others appear to be growing more and more impatient. When you reach the base of the stairs, you can hear them arguing no more than ten feet from you. Pooh's sobs echo through the space. What? Jovi asks. Why'd you stop? Just give me a second, you murmur. I need a little more time to come up with a plan. Thank you for playing the first section of Mousetrap. Due to time constraints, this is where our story ends for now. The rest of the game will be released very soon, but I hope you've enjoyed yourself so far. What? I, I kind of had an idea it was going to end very soon. I didn't think it would end in this episode. I thought we'd be going a little bit longer. Maybe at least get to the first the first trial. Like, get past the first key. And the, and the second one, that's it. But I, then again, it makes sense. Because they only had, what, like a month to make this game? So, um, what I do know is that there will be a major update on March 1st. They uh, The developer, I'll be said that on their page. We'll be looking for that, and I will continue this game when it's getting when it when it starts more updates start coming out. But damn, that sucks! I was so excited to get back into this. It's been forever. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, I guess with that, thank you all so much for watching this episode of Mousetrap by Albi. And if you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, the, this game will be in the links in the description below. I will come back when this game gets more added to it and it becomes a little bit longer. Um, but if it doesn't, then I guess I'll leave it all here. This game was by far one of my favorite, like, non-abrasive, getting out there, busting your ass, trying to get through all of this type game. It isn't like a, you go there and go back. You go there and go back. No, it's like, you continue progressing through the story and no matter what you choose, your choices have matters. And I love choose your own adventure books or anything similar to this. So the fact that that the developer had the idea to make this game for their interactive fiction game jam, they did mm, wow, amazing work. 
I'm excited to see what this game goes through or what changes it goes through. And I'm also excited to see what more comes towards this game. But thank you all so much for watching. Uh, I'll see you all in another, another Let's Play. Adios. <laughs> oh, bye. I hear that, man.